Now I give the floor to the representative of Russian Federation. <coughs> Thank you, President. Minister, welcome to New York. We're very pleased to see you presiding over the Security Council. We also are grateful to the Secretary General and Ms. Robinson for their briefings. In 2020, we are marking the closely connected anniversaries, the 75th anniversary of the end of the Second World War and of the foundation of the United Nations. 75 years ago, the conditions were created for the establishment of a post-war global order and the load-bearing construction of that was the United Nations. It's the cornerstone of the system of international relations and multilateralism. The UN Charter anchors all of the principles of multilateralism. Its aims and principles are imperative norms of international law. The Charter also includes provisions including the non-acceptability of the use of force for, and also the need for peaceful settlement of dis dispute. Non-compliance with the Charter cannot be justified in any way. The axis of this construction is the system of collective security headed by the Security Council. I'd like to stress here the word collective. The whole charter is, includes the idea of collectivism and using friendly relations and cooperation. Furthermore, the charter also has the, imp the important principle of sovereign equality of all states, both large and small. President, the process of forming a polycentric and multipolar world is irreversible. This doesn't suit everybody. Attempts at revisionism in the principles of international law anchored in the UN Charter are often covered with pretty packaging. The clearest example of this was something that's become fashionable today. That's the concept of the rule-based order. These rules are selected and used depending on need. The aim of this concept is to replace universally agreed international legal instruments and mechanisms with narrow formats where alternative non-consensus solutions are developed in contravention of, legal, of the legitimate multilateral frameworks. In essence, we're dealing with an attempt to usurp the process of developing consensus decisions on key issues of the international agenda by a narrow group of states. What's very dangerous is that the guardians of this concept of rule-based order wave away the exclusive prerogatives of the UN Security Council without any hesitation. I'll give you a few examples. After there was an attempt to push a politicized solution through the Security Council that had no proof of and accuse the authorities in Syria of using toxic substances, through vile manipulation and contravention of the Chemical Weapons Authority, the Technical Secretariat of the OPCW was allocated to establish who was guilty of the use of chemical weapons. This is nothing other than a direct intervention in the prerogative of the Security Council. Another example of the violation of the authority of the Council was the creation in contravention of the UN Charter of a so-called independent mechanism for investigation in Syria, the IIIM. Examples of this kind of revisionism of international law unfortunately are growing by the day. Recently, we've, been, we've seen the breakage of the international disarmament mechanism, the torpedoing of the Missile Defense Treaty, withdrawal from the INF Treaty. There's also the new Strategic Arms Reduction Treaty that is under threat, that's the New START Treaty, and the, the Comprehensive Nuclear Test Ban Treaty the CTBT. Today we are dealing with the risk of the whole treaty architecture covering nuclear missile arms control being dismantled. We think that it is any activity that intervenes in the domestic affairs of states to overthrow the legitimate governments is unacceptable. We are against the use of unilateral coercive measures in the absence of a corresponding Security Council resolution or in addition to measures adopted by the Council. This undermines the Council's purview in maintaining international peace and security, is incompatible with the Charter and with the mutually recognised principles of international law, including peaceful settlement of international dispute, sovereign equality of states and non-intervention in their domestic affairs. The deviation from the norms of international law and the unthinking intervention has caused greatest possible suffering for many years in the Middle East and North Africa. The, the, the Israeli-Palestine conflict 
the illegal intervention in Iraq, the ongoing violence in Afghanistan, the murder of the leader of Libya and the destruction of the country, attempts to overthrow the legal authorities in Syria, extrajudicial reprisals against an official of a sovereign state in a third country. These are just a few examples of activities that have left wounds on the body of international law and order. The quintessence of all of these lamentable tendencies was the withdrawal of the United States from the Joint Comprehensive Plan of Action on the Iranian nuclear program as approved by the Security Council and which has key importance for nuclear disarmament or non-proliferation rather. As a result of the inque increasing confrontation, the region and indeed the whole world is on the brink of conflict, the consequences of which should be unpredictable. We call for speedy de-escalation. The risk of conflict is too high and the price is too high. We must also mention another thing the violation and non-compliance with international law and the commitments of the host country of the UN headquarters. We've already been talking about this for a long time. The most recent example of this artificial crisis was the refusal to give a visa to the Iranian Foreign Minister, Mohammad Javad Zarif, who was supposed to speak at this meeting. Mr. President, the Russian Federation is of the view that unswerving compliance with the UN Charter is the only possible way of maintaining peace. Therefore, we say that there is no alternative to maintaining and strengthening the system of international relations based on the UN Charter and the commonly recognized principles and norms of international law that stem from it. Despite the difficulties and the conflict in the modern world, it remains for us and for the majority of countries the most important system and the key instrument of international relations, the legitimate and universal instrument for the collective solution of crises and issues it, is, it has a unique man mandate for dealing with international issues and maintaining international peace and security. And we will continue to defend it. Thank you very much. I thank the representative of Russian Federation for his statement.